GM, 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 we are now live. So welcome to episode 109 of Office Hours. And today we're just going to take a look at what smart money is doing. So I've got some tokens that we're going to look into. We're also going to look at various features across Nansen to see what smart money is doing, as the name implies. So let's get started. And so before we get started, new update, check what's new. You can learn about all the new features mainly to do with uh, CSV download, so for our professional users. Um, but if this is a feature that you're interested in, um, get in touch with the team and we can uh, talk to you all about it. So it wouldn't be an episode on smart money without us looking into our smart money dashboard. Um, and so this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to look at some of the top trades at the moment and look at some of the PNL. This is something new you can see, so you can see what addresses are making. And we can see that there are a bunch of meme tokens. So if you look at these tokens here, these addresses, sorry, you can see there's seven day smart money, Dex traders, uh, 30 days. And then you're also seeing again, this theme of these addresses. And there's also a 90 day smart money Dex trader. So the really cool thing about this label here is that these are, it kind of informs you about these addresses and how profitable they are um, over a certain specific period of time. So if there are seven day smart money Dex trader, that means they're one of the most profitable addresses over the past seven days. And this is profitable in the sense of realized gains and not unrealized because there's no point in making generational wealth if you're not actually going to realize it. So let's just have a look at some of these tokens that they've looked bought into. This is token Pepe 2.0. It looks like a bit of one of those. I've, I've seen it so many times beforehand. So uh, many forks. I think it's one of those ones we just in out, make a bit of money, as we can see here. And we can have a look, see if there's anything really interesting here. So I find this quite interesting. This uh, here, this address here on this token, Athena, making a bit of money off that token. So as as it's a trade, that's also quite interesting to look into. And we'll see this 30 day Dex Trader 2 and see if we can flick through and see if anything else stands out. So, nothing too much there. And we'll go look at those tokens in just a moment. But I also want to point out the smart money token performance. You can see the top traders over those periods and what they traded. So, we're seeing a few meme coins, we're seeing some infrastructure, some AI tokens, some old classics, Bitcoin, which is quite funny to see there. So, that's a quick overview of what smart money is doing in the smart money tab. And let's just look at these tokens. Pepe 2.0, very, very new. If we check out some Dex traders, let's see what they are doing. So this is a very interesting address, uh, just <laughs> to say the least, given that they've just made a load of money. And they have just doubled down on their Pepe 2.0 position. And they are currently down. Interesting, interesting, interesting. When I look at these tokens on uh, smart money inflow, especially over the start, it's when you see the meme coins, be careful because you can see here smart money has taken a lot out. So they probably realized the gains and that's what makes them smart as opposed to some of these addresses that may be still holding and the price is on the decline. And if we look at some of the addresses here, we filter by da -da -da -da, name by label and we're going to put the smart money label here. Just do that by using the smart money emoji. And then we save. We can see that there's been one address that's added some. And let's see if there's any that has dropped it. We haven't seen too much here. And we can see there's a general trend of this address, this token here. We saw a big balance change here of this address. And we saw another address buy. So let's see what they're doing. So this address is grown up, blown up effectively all through these Pepe coins that we see here is all just memes. Um, Pepe coin, Pepe, Pepe 2.0, Pepe 2.0 again. Again, when we look at some of these tokens, um, just because smart money traders bought into it doesn't mean that's necessarily a good investment. They could be in, out. And as we saw through Pepe 2.0 already, it is not the most exciting coin to look at. But let's look at the other smart money Dex trader that we saw in there. And their portfolio has grown substantially. They're currently now worth 516,000. And their biggest holding is Link, or with some stake tower. Nothing too actionable here. So what else is smart money doing? Let's just take a look at smart money token inflow. This is one of my favorite dashboards. We did an episode, I think it was episode 107, where I spent about half an hour going through how you can use this dashboard to see what smart money is doing. And I, can, I would really recommend using that work video and workflow as a way to get started with Nansen to understand how certain features work, how to leverage parts of Nansen and how to really discover your own alpha. If you go into our Discord, you would have seen that uh, someone reached out about 
specific token. I think the token was called Blender. And we walked through uh, that process there on how to research a token as well. So that's also quite fun to look into. And in that video in Discord, um, we found some interesting addresses. So that's pretty cool. And if you ever have any questions about how to use Nansen, what to look out for, how to use specific features, please reach out in Discord and we'll be happy to help. And we can either provide answers written or if it's more of a workflow situation, we can just fire away with a video. Okay, I've just seen a uh, comment bike for sale. <laughs> Looking forward to your feedback and your comments later on. I hope you find this very useful. Um, it's more of a casual episode today because I've been out of office for most of this week and I thought, let's get something going. So we've looked at the SmartMoney dashboard. Now we want to look into SmartMoney token inflow. Some of these tokens here, nothing's really standing out. GOG is standing out because of some research I did earlier on today. A lot of these are like wrapped like wrap state ETH. Sweet, um, swell ETH. So these are people just moving their ETH into like it's a farm, um, especially as we're starting to see Pendle take off. Uh, if you see any other tokens here, nothing that is sticking out right now. We'll have a look at FET because we know about a really interesting address that we've shared beforehand. We've covered Banana Bot as well in the past. So let's have a look at that and see what's going on over there. And let's leave it at that. But before we go into that as well, uh, let's just quickly look into signals. Really powerful feature. Learn an awful lot from there. And if you ever have, um, yeah, yeah if, if you ever want to see what Smart Money is doing, just go and add the Smart My Token filter here, and then you can kind of get an understanding of all the interesting token flows by Smart Money. And these are extraordinary on-chain events that you can discover. So we can see that in this case here, this this trigger is 22 minutes ago, and it is. 30x, 36x, the recent average. Let's just have a look into that, actually. Smart money, what have they done? We see a change, dialectic, and what have they done? Right click, wallet profile for token. So they purchased, are they purchased? So it's transfers over. So that's not as exciting as it could have potentially been. Um, if they move funds to an exchange, for example, that could be an indication of um, Maybe someone's looking to sell a significant amount and that could present itself to do a shorting opportunity. I've just seen the uh, comment to say, can we look at GOG? And we shall quickly look into that. So I'll move on to this tab here. I don't know much about this token. All I know is that it's on Smart Money Token Inflow and I've seen a few addresses uh, prior to this episode of Fasawa's buying it and also having a significant amount in there. So changing the past 24 hours, it looks like it's all related to winter mute, uh, winter mute trading. Um, so that may be interesting. We need to dive a little bit further and let's look at changes in the last 30 days to see if there's anything else really happening here. So it's only really winter mute driving this activity here. And if we go into wallet profile for token, so the way that you do that is you right click and then click wallet profile for token. I typically do that and then command click. So then it opens up a new tab so that I can continue to do my research without losing progress. So here's what's happened. And if we look at one mute trading, so we they have received um, their GOG first for a test transaction as we see here. And then we can also see that they have uh, transferred 5 million to this address. Da, 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 da. And as it's winter mute trading, there could be something actionable here, but sometimes I don't use winter mute trading as the only indicator with a token, often I want to see Winter Mute Trading and other addresses simply because um, there's a big fund and they're very, very involved in the market and they're very in, out, in, out, in, out, as opposed to maybe a smart money actor that has been buying a token, building a position, position, and they are maybe building more of a position or they're reducing their position. And so let's see if I can find one or two on here. Da, 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 da. This is interesting Dex trade. Why did I save them? Ah, here we go. Here is an address that I really like. So Binance ETH is a great example of uh, an indicator and how you can use this address as an indicator. So to kind of touch on this point of, is this bullish or is this uh, bearish? So to answer your question about GOG, um, maybe they've just signed a print mute and this is potentially bullish. I'm not 100% sure. And that's why you would need to do some external research to decide if that is something that they've done. It may be that winter mute trading is trading and maybe buying the token. Um, I'm not too sure. Um, and in that case, I'm just going to do some external research. So I'll check external source to see if there's anything going on there. So going back to this address here, Binance.eth, um, this is a really, really interesting address. And what I find really interesting is if we go to work profile for token on the token ribbon, 
they da, 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 bought a ton of ribbon as the price was going up. They sold a bit, they bought some more, and they sold and sold and sold. But what have they done since? They have actually, so why this is interesting, um, they spent $850,000 roughly, and then they would, so they spent about 500000 sorry, then they sold a portion, they bought some more, sold some more, sold some more. So they effectively recouped their initial position. Um, so the entire investment, so that's 150000 spent, 850000 gained back, and they would have 200000 ribbon in the end. So they traded this token very, very well in the in really interesting market conditions. Um, I've personally set up smart alerts for this address, and I can see that they have been buying even more here. So we know that they're a smart money um, address because they have been buying a token. They've effectively traded position using significant size and have managed to recoup all their initial investments. So they're that riding on um, free money effectively by trading well. And they have just started to buy more and more as the price has been lower. So if we look at their cost basis, they are up 71% at the moment. And as we know, they've traded this token very well. Maybe they're looking to build a position knowing that they could make even more money from this trade. So if they were to sell, for example, that would be an indicator for us to say, well, maybe this address that has done very well with this token is looking to sell. Maybe they're bearish and then we can do some research in Ribbon generally to understand how you would want to act in the market. So if they're selling and we're looking at the token Ribbon and we see other actors that may be profitable or smart money that's selling, then maybe there's a potential short opportunity from there. But in this case, it's actually relatively bullish because we can see that they are buying more. And nine hours ago, they actually just bought some more. So that's very cool. One token that I would like to look into actually as well in the topic of smart money. And so at the start of this episode, I said I want to showcase a few tokens that I'm aware of and just show you just certain features other than and some where you can see smart money is this uh, token FET. And what I find really interesting about FET is not necessarily the token itself, as we can see it's down 16%. But it's one actor in particular that we've come back over and over and over again. Um, we covered it in our newsletter and we've covered it um, in other areas as well. And it is this address called Theta Fuel. And if we look, they started very low, about 500, 400,000, and they have just been trading all the way up to where their portfolio is now. And so this trade here, they sold AI coins and doubled down to, uh, uh, to Phantom, sorry, rode Phantom all the way up to the top, and they rotated into Phantom, from Phantom into FET. A really good point. At the point right now is that FET is down. I mean, the market's all down. We all know it is, right? It's not pretty. Um, I wish it wasn't, but there we go. Um, I'm sure some of you also wish the market wasn't red. But to see an address that has grown their portfolio significantly, making very few moves, but has also been trading very well, they're a smart money address. This is what's kind of caught my attention to FET generally. And of course, nothing here is financial advice, of course. I'm just kind of showcasing the um, on-chain data that we see in Nansen and see what's going on. So we know there's an interesting address. It's an address that we've been tracking. It's an address we've been sharing. It's an address that's been doing really interesting moves. And we know they're a smart money address. So that's the indicator. So how we use source smart money, that's the indicator for us to dive further into a token. So the first thing we want to look at here is... Okay, cool. We can see that smart money net flows are increasing. This is typically bullish, but it all depends on how they're um, bringing in, uh, how they're acquiring, sorry, FET, and what they're going to be doing with it um, and who the addresses are. And then we also want to see who's been buying and selling over the past couple of days. So first we go to smart money. And we have a good understanding of what's going on here. We can see that holders has been increasing gradually. So we start at the start of the year, we were looking at 31 holders. We're now on 36 holders. We're also seeing total balance increase significantly. So if we look at balance changes, balance changes over the last seven days, winter mute market making, that's not something that's important to us because they are market making as opposed to trading. And we're going to be making a change in Nansen soon where some of these addresses that are funds won't necessarily be smart money because they're not really making moves in the market as opposed to, let's say, this address here that's buying and selling or an individual actor um, market making slightly differently from trading of course and we can see that some addresses have been selling and we can see this dex trader here has been buying so let's have a look and see what they're doing and this address is very impressive um so they are a smart dex trader uh, they are a contract i believe 
and we can see that they have been buying or increased or been active with this token so let's see what they're doing so we've seen that they are transferring significant amounts of tokens into this address so this is likely a gnosis safe and uh, they're holding the token here and they're making changes when they uh, see the right market conditions so da -da -da -da. easy way to check is to click on the address go to first funded and we can see it's deployed it's been deployed and as it's been deployed it's likely to be a smart contract or something like gnosis so let's go back to wallet profile for token here <clears throat> And we can see that the balance has been increasing gradually. And now let's have a look to see who is effectively funding this address because they are transferring tokens in, but then they are selling directly via Uniswap. So let's see if there are any big addresses here. So as we see, this address seems to be very common. And we can't see much here. So when we do office hours, it's live, and sometimes we find something, sometimes we don't. And uh, in this case here, I don't think there's too much going on with this address. So let's have a look into Banana Bot. So Banana Bot is also a token that we looked into a while back, and uh, that was quite interesting because at the time when we looked at Banana Bot, the price was around the 42 mark. It pumped up, then drop down slightly and now it's also on the up and as we look at the wider trend in the last let's say six months it has been doing very very well in these market conditions and we're seeing the volume is also quite strong so we found the token through smart money token inflow we've also you know that there's some context of banana bot knowing that it's been performing quite well in the market so this is why we might want to use smart money to dive into this token and see what is going on so when you dive into token crop mode, we will see a general overview of what's going on. And as we're specifically focused on smart money, we're going to look at this chart here. Holders are generally doing quite well. We're seeing this quite choppy. So we see a small drop off here. We're also seeing new addresses come in and out and balances. So it looks like when there was this big drop off, there was a substantial amount of um, banana sold. So what I was saying to you earlier about uh, different addresses and how they can be very useful and interesting, we can see that this smart dex trader here, which is worth over 2 million. So we're going to command click and open a new tab. It's doing quite, it's, it's caught our attention because they've increased their balance here. They're a smart dex trader, which means they're one of the top addresses on chain on Ethereum with realized gains. Again, it's really important to emphasize the realized side of things again. If you, I've said that twice now, <laughs> if you're going to make significant unrealized gains, you have to realize them for them to be like, life-changing effectively. So this is why we find it interesting because this address is on the looks of the surface of things, a highly profitable address. We can also see that a seven-day smart dex trader has also got involved, but they have a small amount here. So that's not too interesting. So if we look at the change over the last 30 days and see if anyone else is in here, uh, Roger Lim, Devmonds, that's a very interesting address as well. That's a fund, but they have done some pretty smart moves um, and is actually one of my favorite addresses to look into. But if we see here, the values down here, so they probably reduced their position actually, but we can have a look into it here. And we can also see that the smart money dex trader is also sold. So let's have a look, that's interesting. So interesting as well, because this is actually an address that I've actually saved um, in the marketing teams uh, and that's an account and I've labeled an interesting text trader and I've labeled it some time ago I must have and I've not realized so to see that address there that sold a significant amount that could be quite interesting so let's go through these addresses we'll start with that address first because there's some prior history here and actually this may be the address that we know it isn't so we can see their portfolio has grown quite substantially. There's been a lot of shopping changes, so it's likely that they've moved funds out. And let's have a look at some of their current holdings. So Ondo, and I think let's just stay with that because I don't know what the rest of them are. So again, we'll go to right click, or profile of token, and we can see their holdings. And that's a very interesting position. We can see that they've been buying uh, Ondo quite aggressively. We see it here. 
and then move transactions that they made here and they started to swap out around here as soon as the price was increasing sold slightly after the dip here sold again just before the dip and they still hold a substantial amount here so if i were to be a ondo holder i would be wanting to track this address because they clearly know when to make the entries and they're also selling at really interesting times so what i would do here is that i would add them to my watch list which i've done and then i would give them an interesting label so in this case i might want to put it as ondo and then i would save the address here and then what i would also do would then i'd create a smart alert new alert token transfers is from custom label ondo a token it can be ondo we don't have to keep it as ondo and then set a minimum value and the reason why you want to do that is to say say five thousand actually one thousand in this case um and then when you set the conditions you can set notifications up in either discord telegram or slack and then you can get updates in real time for every address that has this ondo label so if you are someone that holds ondo and you are tracking specific addresses you effectively have created your own smart money ondo holdings which i think can be very very useful uh, being able to know when to make entries, when to make exits. But again, whenever you see this data, you need to do some research on why these addresses are doing these things and what else are they doing? Are they still profitable? Are they selling over time? How is the rest of their portfolio looking? So the benefits of using these master alerts is that you get the updates in real time, and then it gives you an opportunity to do your research to then maybe even take action from there. So that was that smart dex trader. And now let's take a look at this other smart dex trader. That's pretty impressive as a portfolio, and I'm pretty sure we covered this in the last episode, on episode sorry, 107, because their portfolio has been nothing but up only, turning what 300,000 by the looks of things up to two million in the past year, and they've been doing that pretty aggressively by trading specific tokens here. So we can see here, they bought some Curve, they bought some Bitcoin, that's the meme coin. They've also bought other little tokens here and there. And so Weath is their biggest position at the moment. If we go to Banana bot, bot and go to what profile for token, and then let's have a look to see what else they have in their address. Because I'm cross chains, quite interested here. So they've got actually 600,000, and they actually hold DGen as their other address. For some reason, I thought we've given that the um, the performance of the token. I imagine that they may be riding trends. We see that in their portfolio, they have a bunch of meme coins as well and i've seen a lot of these trending tokens on socials so i'm thinking maybe this is something that they have other trends on other other tokens that they might have had on other networks and the easiest way to see that is then go to this filter here select sorry and then select all chains i was actually expecting them to have the token dmt on arbitrum but they didn't they have it on eth but we found Eden. so let's take a look at their banana holdings first Currently, they are down, but they have been buying and selling, as we can see here. So it looks like they've been very active in terms of when they buy. So 883 balance there at 31, made a bit of money there. Bought again at 32, sold at 30, took a bit of a loss. Bought at 31, sold at 30, 34, 34, 32. So they're trying to trade here, but they're not doing it too well. They've just bought it here. So they've made some good trades. And it's interesting to see how they have performed. So that's not too interesting right now. But then let's have a look at their DGN holdings. And now this is much more impressive. So this is probably why they're smart money as well. Uh, Cheeks, yeah, we can definitely have a look at Weirdo on base. Uh, we can do that right after I've gone through Devmonts as a smart money address. I think that address is something that a lot of people should be paying attention to as a fund on Nansen. They are killing it at the moment with specific tokens. So we can see that back here, they bought 33 million at a very low price here at 0 0.004 and the current price is 0 0.0336. And since then, if we look down here, they have been swapping out. So they've been selling, selling, and moving, by well, looks things, selling funds out and transferring up. And as the prices continue to just continue to surge and everyone's talking about it, they are doing just holding on. So their current value is 406,000 and their initial investments, if we just check here, is they spent about, spent a few thousand into the token, 
spent a few thousand into the token, sold a little bit, recouping some of their investments, starting to scap a little bit more, but they're still holding on to a significant portion of their initial investment. So they had was 33 million and they have just under half of that left. So this could be interesting. So again, if you're finding this address interesting, we could manage labels and then maybe say, I'm interested in the DGEN, so I'm going to keep and have this label here for this address. And boom. The other address that we're going to look into is DevMons. Um, as you can see from the token performance, this is why I think it's really interesting and why I think people should be paying attention to it. Very easy to reach out to. Just press Command K and then you type DevMons and you can find their addresses here. The addresses, if we go to all chains, we can also see some of their other tokens, but Prime is obviously the token they've done very well in. Um, it's up significantly. If we go to what a profile for token here and we just go to Trump, we can have a look and see that they're up 685% here with, with them claiming more and showing no signs of uh, selling. They also just participated in the recent Prime fundraise. So they're very bullish on the token. So that maybe implies that they are looking to continue to add to that position and they're looking for a long term hold. If this address were to sell or transfer funds out, then maybe that's an indicator for you to uh, take action in the market based on Prime if you do hold that token. And then if we look at their Trump holdings, they have sold a little bit and they sold a bit more here, but they're up over 3,000%. And this is unrealized, of course. Uh, so that's really interesting. Nonetheless, and the price has been going down slightly, but they're still looking to hold. So. If you are a holder of this Trump coin, then this could be another address that you want to monitor and watch because they've sold beforehand, they're up significantly. And if they're looking to sell, then maybe that's an indicator for you to maybe make a move in the market. But again, it's always important to look into the wider context and do your research on that and to find out what is actually going on. So we're looking for smart money and we've had a request to look into Weirdo. So if we go to Weirdo, on base let's just get this up here and you can see it here really important to note that we have support for many different chains for token god mode and we're looking to improve our multi-chain support across nansen over the coming year it means more feature supports for let's say smart alerts on different networks um smart segments etc etc so that we provide a much better um, experience for you on nansen and allows you to find do your research for different tokens and get smart so where is the token we've been requested to look into? Let's go to Smart Money. So if we look at Smart Money, we can see there are very few holders, slowly increasing. So we're currently on two holders and they're holding 8,000 here. And if we look at the addresses that have changed balances, we can see that there is a NFT sweeper and a Smart LP and also another Smart LP here. So these addresses, I wouldn't say are the best indicators. What would be a better indicator would be this smart dex trader here. So I'm going to quickly go into this address here. And the reason why I think that's a very good indicator is because they're a seven day smart dex trader. If they've gone into a trade and they've also exited, then maybe they don't see this is a token that they're interested in anymore and they're looking to move on or they may have taken profits, but we need to look into the token first and the address first to see if that's what they did. So we see that they bought in at an average price around 0 0.6 and they sold it at 2x. Plain and simple, in, out, job, done. Which is pretty smart. They went in, they've got the profit. They could have made substantially more if we look at the price of Weirdo there. It's currently at 2.23. So they could have been up on 3, 4x now. But they decided to take their profit. And if we look at their holdings now and go to three months, on base, we can see the portfolio has been climbing up substantially. So that's probably why they went in and went out. Other tokens that they this address holds, they hold the token Orb and this token Benny, but it looks like in the case of Benny that they are likely down, but they might not actually. So they spent one point, so they spent 0 0.5 ETH in here. The price has increased, it's increasing, it's increasing. And despite the token being down, what was it, 46% earlier? 
46 percent then maybe there's something there who knows um but i would say research that and do your own research because i think uh meme coins are very volatile highly risky this token orb as well is where the other dress is the other thing they're holding and currently they're staying in ETH. maybe they're watching the market seeing what's going on and again so the price is, hasn't really done much for them they haven't done too well on this price here um so i would say not too interesting not too actionable here so they made some profitable trades in the past and they have maybe that's it they've had they've had <laughs> they've had some good wins but they're not making many wins at the moment right now their portfolio isn't doing too well um as in terms of like the other tokens that they hold obviously just holding eth is a strategy that the average dormy will hold um so they have to outperform that and if they're staying in eth maybe they're bearish on base meme coins at the moment if we look actually on ethereum this is very interesting as well so they probably sold moved some funds over out here and if we look at their top token balances, so Phantom's the largest bag on Phantom as well. Again, as I said, you can go here to all chains to see the chain support for these addresses. And we have other tokens here, which is could potentially be interesting. So by judging by this portfolio, uh, we can see that they are pretty much more on the meme coin side of things. They've probably done some farming. We can check it through there, the USDE, they held some ETH, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, and they held some MOG again, some meme coins. This token here is up quite substantially, so let's have a quick look into it here. And they're up 168%, so that's pretty cool, and that's probably why they're smart. Um, they make trades, but they are taking substantial risk because it is a meme coin. And I said I'll look into the other addresses as well, so we go back down to the widow tab, and we can see that this address here has no bands here, but let's go to shelter swap. And they bunch of if it seems that they've lost money in the market. So if we go to normie and then if we go to weirdo, bought it for 16, and we're seeing them buying again. So they've lost money on Weirdo. So if we go back to how is smart money reacting to Weirdo in the market at the moment, um, they have bought in buying into the meme coin trade. And then at the moment they're doubling down in their position, hoping to see that the recent dip is going to bounce back. Um, as a smarter LP, that's an indicator for maybe their positions on like um, liquidity pooling and making money through that side of things. But what you really want to be seeing, especially when you're looking at the meme coin side of things, is smart dex traders, as these are the ones that are making realized gains in the market, and they can be much better indicators as opposed to like an NFT sweeper. And then if we look into the Normie holdings as well, you've got Weirdo, you've got Normie, um, which is quite interesting. I've seen some people talk about how Normie and Weirdo are like the counter trades to each other. So if you look at the meme coins on base, you buy one by the other maybe there's some interesting things there some communities to perform from there they purchased their 14 cents double down at 13 cents and currently the token is at just over seven cents so they're not doing too well on base and if we look on ethereum to see how they're performing they haven't got too much there at the moment so I would say that on Widow's side of things, like MemeCoin, uh, nothing too exciting is happening on on there right now. And I would probably be risk off on there just because the smart money actors that are in there aren't performing too well and they're not smart money dex traders. And we're also seeing a substantial decline in the price of Widow on base. So I'm not seeing indicators that make me go, this is potentially interesting. I want to research more. I'm seeing uh, signals that are saying, wait a minute, this isn't doing too well. Maybe it's worth looking into another token. Um, while we've got it here, we've got some time left. I suppose running over, but it doesn't really matter. Let's take a look at some smart money signals. So go to signals. Signals uh, surface extraordinary on-chain events in real time. So you can see what's happening and see what addresses are doing. And maybe you can find some actual info. So Cocumbria, this is something that you might be interested in. If you're looking at maybe how to find ways to make entries and exits into a token, if you're seeing smart money do interesting things with specific tokens that are extraordinary, this is a great place to start your research. We looked at Rare earlier. 
for Volta is only 6x, 14x, 4x, 5x, 17x. This is an interesting signal. And what else? Pendle, that's an interesting signal as well. So let's start with Pendle. So we can see that Smart Money has sent 332,000 of Pendle in the last 24 hours, which is 14x the recent average. We used to say that this money was dispersed, but dispersed wasn't really the right word to use because they may have sent funds to an exchange, they may have sent funds to another address. We don't really know, so we play a little bit more conservative on this side of things. So we'll click right here, and we can see the price of Pendle has gone through the absolute roof. After YT Mania as well, we're seeing that people are making substantial um, earnings on their ETH yield at the moment. It's become a very popular token, but if we look at the 24 hour net flow, we see smart money has actually been moving funds out. So if we look at the price, that may be an indicator that they're saying it's quite hot at the moment, going to de-risk. And if we look at the price, like we can see over seven days, bounce back and then maybe some addresses are looking to take profit. If we look at token balances, we can see balances gradually increasing, but holders is also increasing as well. So with a token like this, and this is Pendle was actually one of the other tokens that I wanted to look into. So I wanted to look at Pendle, FET and Athena. I don't think we have time to look into Athena today, um, but I will do some research into Pendle just to show you what you can see and how you can use that workflow. So you go to signals, you see interesting signals. If you see something that's extraordinary and it's a massive outlier, then we can start doing our research. And it's important to note that a signal isn't the first place to, to start taking action. The action is done after the research. And of course, the conclusions that you make are down to what you see. Um, so Nansen doesn't tell you what to do. It just gives you the information to help you make decisions that work best for you. So the price increased and we can see that the biggest change is from this John Doe account, which is a smart DEX trader, as I've said, Smart Dex traders are often very good indicators for when you're looking at tokens, especially large token movements, whether they're making entries or exits. So I'm going to command click, open up a new term for that there. And then if I look at balance changes in the last seven days, the largest one here is a smarter LP. So let's just go and set what a profile for token here. Are they up? They're up 25%. They're an LP, as I said, that's not as exciting as uh, other addresses. So I'm going to move on to John Doe. John Doe is much more interesting. As you can see, their portfolio, they've been holding a bunch of different tokens. They've been holding Pendle actually, what was it from 10th April, so over a year now, and they've been seeing that increase as part of their portfolio, which is quite substantial actually. If you see here, it's like 15,000 up to 20,000 onwards, and we can see it continue 300,000 there, and it's growing 400,000, 500,000, 700,000, 900,000, 1 million. So, yeah, it, it is substantial as part of their portfolio. And one of the reasons why their portfolio has grown substantially as it's now, what, 1.4 million, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, so they started with 14,000. They've been growing their position significantly up to the point where it's, well, it's, it's done significant growth. And you can see there are tokens that they're holding. ETH, as we know, is their biggest holding. And let's have a look into Pendle. So we go to what a profile for token, you right click, and then click work profile for token. And we can see that they're up over 900% on their cost basis. And when the price is quite hot, we can see that they've been reducing the position. So if we look over in the year, through Binance, there is. So, yep, it looks like they bought Pendle through there all time. Let's see if there's anything else here. So yeah, they were buying Pendle three years ago. Um, this is very interesting. Um, very, very interesting to see here actually as, a, as an address. If we look at indicators, and as I was saying earlier, why I think it's really important to do some research is that by using smart money as an indicator and then diving into some of these smart money addresses, especially ones like Dex Trades, if you're looking into tokens or NFTs, if you're looking into NFTs, et cetera, you're going to get an understanding of uh, how, one, how smart money actors perform in the market, two, how they act in the market. So um, performances might never go up, basically. How they act in the market is maybe a longer term view. Maybe there's a long term thesis towards what they're looking into. And then you can also see um, what they're actually doing in real time. 
And so for here, we can see that they have been buying Pendle for uh, past three years ago. So let's go all the way back to here. Three years ago, they were buying when the Pendle was substantially lower than what it is now. And they've been buying to that position here. They're providing LP. They've been doing all sorts of things with Pendle. They seem to be someone that is very bullish on what Pendle can offer. And throughout the bear market, as the price declined, they didn't sell for a long pause. So from their first entry in 2000, September 2021, one year they didn't do anything. They reduced their position, but that wasn't to sell. If we look, we can see that they were doing something here, which is providing liquidity. They were staking as well. So they are pretty bullish. But what we're also starting to see now is that as the price has increased substantially, and we can see that the cost base is up nearly a thousand percent, that they're starting to take profit, which is something that I would consider to be a smart move. And so if I was someone who was looking to hold Pendle, or if I was looking to make an entry, or if I was looking to maybe put a short position on, this address could be something that's very high value as an indicator because I'll be able to see if they're making moves, I can maybe look at the, uh, get them tracked as a smart alert. And then from there, I will then use that information to do some research and see what other addresses are doing in the market. So for this, I think I'm going to add a label here. Um, I'm actually going to add the special marketing label here. Um, I'll say a bit more about that in a moment. And uh, I'm also going to put a label here for Pendle. So small alpha leak as it's what, 40 minutes into the episode of Office Hours is that we have this special marketing label here. And these are addresses that really catch our attention and we seem very valuable and actionable. So we like to just kind of grab all these addresses that we see when we're creating content or what we're doing in market trends or when we're doing our research, doing office hours, et cetera, et cetera. And bundle them up, track them with smart alerts, see what they're doing and maybe we find something interesting. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this address and maybe check out what it's doing in real time for other tokens. But for Pendle specifically, I find it very interesting because we're now seeing that they're moving funds to Binance. And often when you're sending funds to Binance, you're looking to sell. And if you look at the cost basis, the address has made substantial gains. Interesting. And as we saw, the balance change has been negative. They've been selling. Price has gone up since, of course, but when we link that time frames, they're not thinking in terms of seven days a month. They're thinking way, 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 way longer. So while the price might be high now, the price could be much lower in maybe a month or two months time. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out. So I'll be tracking that on smart alerts and maybe even produce some content on this address. As that address has got my attention, let's see what else they're holding. Pendle, Aave, scale that's interesting potentially dydx science synapse ribbon actually let's look at ribbon because we still saw ribbon earlier down 42 percent not so smart and if we look at let's see are they why not and i know i've seen antonio on twitter talk about dydx quite a lot at the moment ball posting is this address up let's have a look and let's have a look at looks. Down 13%. If we look all time, uh, go back down to all time. Transferred the money from a different address by looks of things. And maybe this is an address they've been using to fund, but it's nothing that screams anything obvious. They're not trading actively. Maybe they're just holding it for a long time. So we'll ignore that one, not too exciting. If we look at Aave, they're up 100%, pretty interesting. Again, their activity is over a much longer time frame. So when we look at smart money, I think it's really important to highlight that. Time frames can be much, much longer, but these addresses are often trying to make substantial gains and they have a much they have a driven thesis. And the smart money DEX trader is gonna to be totally different to a smart money DEX trader over seven or 30 days, where a seven or 30 day trader might be trading trends or maybe memes. A smart money index trader may be thinking in terms of much wider trend and where the market's going to be going in two, three years in the case of Pendle, for example. And so, again, I'm quite interested in this because they're up substantially. 
they received uh, Binance, uh, they received um, Arlo from Binance and they've also added some liquidity, but not too much, which is a bit weird. Interesting. <laughs> so we've seen that they are very, they're holding on, they're likely bullish on the token. Um, and again, it could be an interesting indicator to see what they're doing. So what I would do is not just set um, smart alerts for the pendle, but I would track smart alerts for specifically this token address and see token transfers in and out to see if those addresses funding this address or if they're looking to sell or transfer funds out. And then finally, the other token that we wanted to look into was the ITX here. And again, as we can see, if we go to all time here, da, 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 they received a bunch in terms of rewards. They sold, moved some to Binance. They moved some out. So that's quite interesting. So if they're on Binance, if they're on DYDX and they receive some rewards, they're probably trading perps. This could be an interesting address because they may be profitable using things like DYDX. Maybe they're using others to like... Uh, perhaps at the moment, maybe they're farming on there, like um, Hyper Liquid or ABO, and that's really interesting. So let's have a look on their transaction, actually. This address has caught my attention more than I realized it would do. So this episode is definitely overrunning, but I think one that I think you guys should definitely pay attention to. So all time, the all time holdings, they hold ARB. Interesting, hold ETH. On our how to AVAX and ETH on optimism. What else are they doing? If we look at their transactions in the past year, so quite, what I'm doing here is just to kind of explain my process is that I found an address and I've noticed that not only is it one token, but they're also quite active in certain um, areas. Uh, they, they're, they're trading on perps because we know that because they received rewards. They're making a long-term bets on DeFi tokens, whether it's Arbe for a year, Pendle for three years. Uh, maybe this is an address that can indicate market trends before anyone else, and they bet really big. So if I were to track this, maybe I can spot things before Crypto Twitter talks about them. So let's see what else they've been doing in the last month. They're not very active, actually. 21 hours ago, they made a move. 21 days ago, month go moving some funds over disperse so they're moving funds into their address from one way let's see if there's anything else here the thing i love about office hours and i hope that you guys will benefit from it and if you ever have any questions about how to research anything when we kick fire an episode just fire away questions we can answer them this is all live so it's all happening in real time um we can look into tokens that you're interested in we can look at specific workflows we start with an overarching theme let's say smart money and then we just dive into the data. And then because we haven't looked at the data in advance or we haven't dived into it thoroughly at the time, um, we find interesting things. So we can see, for example, that this address has been buying Metis and that could be potentially interesting. So let's right click here, wallet profile for token. What else are they doing? Wait for this to load. MBX, they seem to be building a position in there as well, which I'm not too sure what this token is. But I was expecting to see maybe like uh, some more farming activity for someone that's quite DeFi native, maybe some things into like um, YT products on Pendle, as we're seeing with Athena, people are wanting to farm that yield and get those points or sats which could, <laughs> for, for Athena, or maybe they're farming, let's say, uh, EtherFi or a restaking or Eigenlayer. I'm not seeing too much there. They're just making very strong moves in the market. But I doubt this is their only address. So maybe they've got other interesting things happening elsewhere. High activity, high activity. Yeah, so we're fire pumps in. We haven't seen too much. But we are going to go into Metis, which is go back, go back, go back. Let's go to John Doe here, see if they still hold here. I love the name. John Doe 69. I've just realized that John Doe obviously being the name for like bodies, their bodies, and you don't know the name or identity of these people. And 69, obviously, probably just a crypto meme, crypto meme. So funny. Let's have a look. See their metis, 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 metis. Here we go. Right click, what a profile for token. Nice. 
<laughs> so we just saw what they were doing. Um, transferred funds from Gate.io. So they probably bought them on the exchange two years ago. And as we see here, they're up 347%. And they have sold some on Uniswap, but they're still holding and they're up quite substantially. So again, so we found a big position in Aave. We found a big position in Pendle. And they've now found a position in Metis, which is about 50,000, where they've been thinking over a long, long, long time horizon. So we might go, hey, this dress is quite cool, but you won't see anything happening. And then maybe the next month you might not see anything. And in two months you might not see anything. But maybe a year later you see that they've made substantial white gains and they've been very active and they've had this conviction, which is really, really cool. And then let's have a look at the other token. And the other token was MBX. And this token, not so lucky. <laughs> so they bought, they bought, they bought by the looks of things. Yeah, they bought and bought and bought. But it's not done well. <laughs> but as we've said, and we saw with Pendle, um, this is obviously not an endorsement for this token. I actually have no idea what it is. They could be thinking that there's a big thesis playing out in much longer time frame with Pendle they bought three years ago they were very involved with that and they've only just started selling so maybe in three years time meta blocks is something that does incredibly well who knows um a bit of an alpha league as well might as well share it so whenever i find addresses like this and we set smart alerts what we can do as well is that we have a workflow internally that allows us to just keep an eye on these addresses see what they're doing and always constantly following up on addresses on a manual basis so that we can kind of deliver you interesting alpha and insights, whether it's on our Discord or Twitter, both of which you should be involved in, and uh, hopefully give you interesting alpha and edges. But I did say there might be an alpha leak, and I think this address here is probably the alpha leak that we were looking into. And that was all caused through the signal. So we saw that Smart Money has sent a substantial amount of Pendle away, and by sending it, they moved to Binance. Um, very, very... Uh, Nice way of putting it. <laughs> and they probably likely sold on that exchange, um, given that it is Binance and they have probably made a substantial gain on there. The other token that we looked at was the other signal we saw was Mog. Um, get mogged, a bit of a meme. It's quite funny. I quite enjoy it. But the token itself, no opinions on it. They are both on Ethereum and Base. We are, because when you deploy a contract on base, the contract address might be slightly different. So if we look at Prime as a good example, the contract address is very different, but we are working on a way to capture the different contract addresses and bundle them together. At the moment, it's a bit of a manual process and we've done that for Prime. As I can show you here, let me just go on to here. Prime. So there we go. And we bundled it together here. And then if you look in the search bar, which if you were to do this, uh, the URL, sorry, you'll see the contract address is different. So you'll see the base is here and then Ethereum is there. So there's two different contract addresses, but it's the same token. So we do have that multi-chain support. Um, sometimes there are chain networks, uh, tokens, sorry, that are different networks. Uh, and we are trying to improve our pro progress on there so that we can kind of capture all that. Another token, for example, I know I think it's like Zion, which is some meme coin that we covered, which was, which did really well at the time. Um, it's not doing so well now, so maybe there's something there. But let's go back down to Mobcoin. We know that there was a signal there, interesting, triggered by smart money. What's going on? Holders have been increasing, balances not so much. That implies that some of the larger holders have been selling, but there have also been some accumulation. And that is interesting. So if we look at the changes, we see two addresses, one address buying, one address selling. Let's have a look and see what they're doing and who they are. Cutty.eth, Smart NFT Sweeper, right click, what profile for token, and Smart LP, what profile for token. The other addresses, not so interesting, but this Smart Dex Trader could potentially be interesting given that they are a Dex Trader, we talked about that beforehand. So they bought and they sold a small amount to recoup their investment, as you see here, and they sold and sold and sold. So they made a bit of money out of the trade. Done. So that's what makes them smart. Cutty.eth. We can see that they're buying more. So they bought in early. They sold substantially when there was a price increase. And as the price is dipping now, they have bought more. So maybe they're thinking that 
in terms of total performance, as it has performed so well so far, and as this is like uh, quite a big meme coin on crypto Twitter and people are enjoying those memes and so on, they could be doubling down on that position, thinking that there could be significant upside. Meme coins are all about attention and maybe it won't play out. Uh, I'm not too sure here, but if you are someone that was interested in the mob, this could be an address that you want to monitor and see how it plays out because what we see here is what you would have seen here, what you would have seen here, and what you would have seen here. Um, but of course, during that time, the address didn't buy anything at that time. And if you have a look at the other address, things that this address holds, Morgan's is their biggest holding, and <laughs> ironically, <laughs> Erect is their second largest holding. So let's hope they're not wrecked on that position. They bought three days ago, they're down 8%. Maybe this will wreck them. Who knows? I'm not gonna track this address. I'm not gonna set alerts for it. Um, but I thought that was interesting to share. Finally, let's look at the Smart LP, the address that's been selling substantially, <laughs> very aggressively in the market. So we go to all time just to make sure we're seeing everything here. They bought in very early, sold, bought some more. What's that? 0 0.01. Must be. We see the volume changes here. So the price will be on the decline. They haven't done too well on here. I don't, I don't believe. If we look at here, they've probably done okay. Managed to recoup some profit, but as the price declined, they're probably looking to play elsewhere. Their portfolio is over 500,000. So let's just have a look to see what else they're holding to see how it plays out. And yeah, if we see here, look, they had no more care. They bought in and they grew their portfolio. So it's around here. Substantially took some profit, as we saw here, turned into USDT, which is quite nice. And the price of mortgage declined substantially. So at the peak, their mortgage was worth around 1.1 million. It's currently worth, it was currently worth 600,000. They sold it all for USDT. So very risk off at the moment. And if we look at the other tokens that they hold, they're very negative. So they traded the token value by the looks. Uh, they traded this token. Is it ETH? It's just ETH by the looks of things. And they had ETH, bought a meme coin, bounced. Nothing too exciting there. First funded through an exchange. Nothing too interesting there. We look across all chains. Again, nothing too interesting here. So, yeah, it was an address that's been buying. Um, be buying uh, more sites to sell, took some profits, realized that actually when they made a significant amount of money, potentially that they could have sold and um, made even more money, they risk off holding stable coins. If they were holding ETH, maybe there'll be something interesting there in terms of being able to track that address because they are looking to maybe make another move in the market, maybe they can spot another trend, maybe they're doing other things in the market. But in this case, if you're holding USDT, it is a clear sign that they're looking to ride the wave of stability. So that was a very, very, very long episode on what is smart money doing? We looked at a few tokens. We looked at a few ways to cover smart money. We looked at a few workflows and we also found a very, very, very interesting address. I hope you found this episode of Office Hours really, really useful. Um, and yeah, if you ever have any questions about how to do things on Nansen or if you have any questions on what to do or what to look out for, what tokens to look into, like we can definitely make this we can definitely do that. It's not a problem. Um, so as we said, there was someone who wanted us to look into Weirdo. It's quite cool. And we looked at other tokens. So whatever you're interested in, we're here to help show you how to find that and research that and see what's going on using Nansen. And hopefully we also find the occasional alpha leak, which I think we did with that uh, John Doe 69 account on OpenSea. So that's Office Hours. Uh, if you could like and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. If you have any uh, feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. If there are other things that you want us to cover, please let us know. One thing that we're looking to do more of in office hours as we go weekly is to bring on more external guests. So maybe these are from DAPS, maybe they are external people in different teams, and we can just, just see what's going on in the market. Last week, we had uh, ZK Singh and uh, Pudgy Penguins on. Very fun episode. And I hope to see that we have even more episodes like that going forward. So have a lovely weekend. See you next week. And uh, yeah, get started using Nansen using the link below. <laughs> so see you later, everyone. Bye-bye.